Howdy y'all. Uh, my name is Mike. I live in Houston, Texas. Um, I found myself today watching a bunch of videos of people from other countries reacting to what it's like in other countries. And I thought that was interesting. And so being from um, the country of Texas, I figured that uh, it'd be fun to see if maybe someone out there would find it interesting to see what I thought. Um, maybe not. But anyway, so this video I'm checking out today is called The Average American versus Average British Person. How do they compare? And it's from the Infographic Show. So shout out to them. Check out their channel. Two of the closest allies in the world today are the United States of America and the United Kingdom of Great Britain, with both countries considering their bilateral partnership to be the strongest of bonds. I would agree with that. When I think of uh, the United Kingdom, I view them as kind of like our parents. You know what I mean? I feel like it'd be the easiest to transition from America to there. I, that may not be true. I've never been uh, to Europe at all, but um, I do kind of view them as our, as our parents, kind of. The British American bloodline runs deep, with millions of Americans identifying themselves as having either English, Scottish, Welsh, or Scotch-Irish ancestry. Given these close ties... Mine, on my, on my dad's side, the furthest back that I've, I've been able to trace is uh, English, and then on my mother's side, my grand, I asked my grandfather, and he said he thinks that his grandparents were from France. He doesn't remember for sure, <laughs> so I don't know what I am. So we thought it would be fun to compare these two powerful nations in this episode of the Infographic Show, The Average American versus The Average Brit. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that you can be part of our notification squad. First of all, we should explain what the United Kingdom of Great Britain is, as it's often an area... I will admit, not 100% sure. <laughs> area of confusion. When we talk about the UK, we are referring to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, which is a sovereign state consisting of four countries, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. The average Brit we are discussing today is someone from the UK. In terms of ancestral relations, according to a Census Bureau American Community Survey, nearly 27 million people identified as being part English, over 5.5 million said Scottish, about 5 million said Scotch-Irish, and nearly 2 million said Welsh. Although Irish and German Americans make up larger portions of the US public, it's thought there are a lot more Americans that have Brit blood flowing through their veins, but no longer consider themselves being anything other than a full-blooded American. With yeah. <laughs> This in mind, we'll start with some comparisons of a physical nature. The average Brit stands just a fraction taller than the average American, with the BBC lately reporting that the average man in the UK is now 5 feet 10 inches and the average woman is 5 feet 5 inches. American men average 5 feet 9 and a half inches and American women 5 feet 3 and a half I recently, we were drinking at a bar, we are talking about height, and I weighed, or I'm sorry, I measured my height, and I was 5 foot 9 and 9 tenths. So, I guess I'm in line with that. Half inches. Both countries are considered to be not so well proportioned when compared to other more developed nations, with a new report from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation stating that the USA is in 18th place on the world's most obese nations list. Only Egypt was the other populous nation in the top 20 yeah. countries, which was filled mostly by countries in the South Pacific. The UK, however, might also need to get in shape, with reports stating that obesity is a national tragedy, and that by 2025, the UK will be the fattest country in Europe. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's latest report, the average average American male is now 195.7 pounds and the average woman is 168.5. I weigh one, like 88, 189. So, so I'm a little, little taller and a little less fat. <laughs> five pounds. The average British man is 186.2 pounds and the average woman is 154 pounds. Does the fact both countries are perhaps on the heavy side influence life expectancy? American men on average will live to 77.11 years Michael, and American me. women 81.94. Citizens of the United Kingdom can expect to clock out at a similar age on average with male life expectancy standing at 79.1 and female life expectancy 82.8. That's surprising that that the UK's uh, life expectancy is higher. I don't, I don't mean not throwing shade. I'm just saying in America, we allegedly have the best health care, but I don't know. I can see it. The median age, meaning half the country is older and half the country younger, is 37.8 in the USA for men and women and right on 40 in the UK. 
Which country is making more babies at the moment? Current statistics state that the US and UK are similar here, with births per woman in America averaging 1.84 and in the UK 1.9. Marriage rates have decreased in many developed nations over the last few decades. According to the CDC, in 2015, 6.8 people per 1,000 of the total population tied the knot in the USA, while in the UK, that number was 4.5 per 1,000. Around 42% of UK marriages end in divorce, with almost half of US marriages ending the same way. I think I'm confused. Marriage rate. There is way more people married than that, right? I think I might have misunderstood. The divorce rate around 50. I can see that. On that sobering note, we'll take a look at money matters. In terms of industry, both nations are considered champions of the world, but according to the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, the USA citizen grosses a higher salary than the average UK person. The average gross salary in the USA was the fifth highest in the world at $4,893 per month, while the UK sat in 14th place on the list with an average of $3,461 per month. That's interesting. I wonder... Maybe he'll compare it to cost of living, but... Um, that's surprising. $1,500, surely there's some kind of trade-off there. Because I don't, when I think of British people, I think, um, or people from the United Kingdom, I, I feel like I think that they are a wealthy, um, comfortable, you know, probably almost certainly better education than we have. Um, that's surprising that it's such a large difference. In terms of cost of living, Americans might need a few extra dollars, with one report putting the USA in 18th place in the world on a cost of living index, and the UK in 29th place. We must also note that cost of living and wages can change dramatically from city to city. If we take a look at the economics Big Mac oh index, we find that the cost of a Big Mac in the US is $5.06, while the Brits only pay $3.73. At the same time, the in Okay, I'm not a McDonald's fan, but if I could get Big Macs for $3.73, Index shows someone in London has to work on average one minute longer than someone in New York to buy the same burger. At the high end of the earning scale, the US is home to the richest man on the planet, Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. I bet that's not true anymore. When was this? 2017? I, I'm pretty sure it's Jeff Bezos now whose fortune amounts to around $87 billion. The richest person in the UK is actually listed as two brothers, who are part of the Hinduja family. Their net worth is around $16.9 billion, according to Forbes. In total, there are 134 billionaires based in the UK, according to the Sunday Times, while the USA has the most billionaires in the world at 565. What do Americans and Brits get for all their hard work? Well, the Brits don't work as hard, according to one study that divided the total number of hours actually worked by the average number of people in employment actually worked versus working per year. The USA was 16th on the list at 34.40 hours per week and the UK was 24th on the list. What? I, a work week in the US is 40 hours. That's standard. If you work over 40, you'll start getting uh, paid overtime, which is time and a half. So, you know, if you work 50 hours in a work week, you will get paid straight like normal time for the 40. And for the extra 10, you'll get one and a half times your normal pay, at least. I mean, that is extremely common. There's some weird outliers and exceptions and stuff, like for seasonal jobs. I think it's with seasonal jobs, like if you work at like a water park during the summer, I think that they don't have to pay you overtime, no matter how much you work. But um, you pretty much, you work 40 hours, unless you're not a full-time employee. Uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 with an hour lunch is like the gold standard, like the vast majority of people work that unless they are not a full-time employee or if they, they might be night shift or something. Just at 32.25 hours per week. The Brits also get more time off with workers by law given 5.6 weeks of paid vacation. 5.6 weeks? What? <laughs> That's nuts. Five points. So, um, in America, it's pretty common. Two weeks is kind of like the, if you get two weeks paid vacation, that's pretty cool. Um, not a lot of jobs offer that though. Uh, I, I would, most Monday through Friday, eight to five jobs, about two weeks. I've worked where I work, I won't say, but, uh, about seven years and some change. And now I get three weeks paid vacation. Um, I think when I get to eight years or 10 years, it'll bump to four weeks paid vacation, which is nuts. That's, I think that's pretty good. 5.6 weeks. You get a month and a half off every, every year. That's insane. 
vacation time per year. In the US, there is no such law, and pay time off is an agreement made between the employer and the employee. The yeah, there's, there's absolutely no um, laws that state that an employer has to give you paid time off. A lot of people, like um, part-time workers or um, workers at like lower-paying jobs, t seems to go hand-in-hand hand that they, they don't give you paid vacation at all. You can ask for time off, and they'll, they'll grant it, but it's not going to be paid. Average paid days of law and pay given 5.6 weeks of paid vacation time per year. In the US, there is no such law, and pay time off is an agreement made between the employer and the employee. The average paid days off in the US is said to be about 10 days, with that number increasing with the number of years in a certain job. The UK has less public holidays, though, at 8 days, with the US enjoying 10 national public holidays. Americans may work harder, but they also seem to be getting more for their buck. While the British public have been dealing with drastically increasing property prices, they also live in very small abodes. Studies have found that Britain's houses on average are some of the smallest in Europe at around 818 square feet. American citizens on average can enjoy much larger living areas with the average house size being around 2,160 square feet. The US also has more in terms of vehicle ownership. America is third on the list of number of vehicles owned per 1,000 people at 797, excluding motorcycles and anything else on two wheels. The UK lies in 34th place on the same list with 519 vehicles per 1,000. Yeah, I, if you live in Texas, you pretty much, unless you live in like downtown Houston or uh, a major, if you live close enough to the city to ride the public bus, which you don't, you don't want to ride the public bus, <laughs> but um, you can't, it's an option. But um, if you live, like I live about 30 minutes north of Houston and you, you have to have a car. Uh, my wife and I split a car so we have one car for both of us and i have a take-home car for work which is very convenient but uh, that's an uncommon perk that i have uh, but yeah you you gotta have a car pretty much uber's making it easier but if you have to Uber to and from work, it would be more expensive than a People. Car. Rising property prices, expensive cars, what does this mean in terms of borrowing money? Household debt statistics, which is measured by all money owed to financial institutions, whether it be for a house or a BMW, has both the UK and the US in the top 10 countries of the world. For 2016, the UK was in 6th place on the household debt list, and the US not far behind in 7th place. UK citizens looking for a higher education and a good start in life might also have to take on a lot of debt before they actually embark on a career. While much of Europe enjoys a free ride or low cost higher education, England is now said to be the most expensive place in the world to get a college degree. The latest reports state UK nationals attending an English university can expect annual tuition to be $11,715 compared to the $9,410 Americans pay on average per year. It's ridiculous that we do have the option um, in the United States, you can go to a community college, which is way cheaper, it's just not as prestigious. And what you could do is get a two year degree for probably a quarter of the price of a major university. Uh, and then those credits transfer over to a major university, but yeah, you're not getting out of there without some bumps and bruises, unless you're lucky and work hard for a scholarship or something. On average, the class of 2016 in the USA owed around $37,172 in loans, while students graduating from a university in England could expect to owe as much as something in the region of forty dollars to $55,000. Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland all have cheaper university tuition fees, or no tuition fee for Scottish people studying in Scotland. Students may still have to borrow to study, though, with a recent report by the student loans company stating the average student debt in Northern Ireland and Scotland was around $26,000 and $15,000, respectively. The Welsh have Part of their tuition fees paid for by the Welsh government, but students still rack up debts on average of around $24,000. UK citizens may take some comfort in matters of healthcare, oh with boy. most costs covered by Britain's National Health Service. Americans are not so fortunate, with an article in The Atlantic this year stating that more than a quarter of Americans said that someone in their household was struggling to pay off crushing medical debts. With that, we come to the end of today's show. Head on over to yeah, the comments the, section. The, I avoid the hospital at all costs, not because I'm scared of the hospital, but I'm scared of that bill. And I have health insurance. It's still scary. But anyways, um, so that's it for that video. Um, appreciate you watching. And um, hopefully you found it interesting. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching anyway. See ya.